Guests on Keel appear via the Jack Spring Electric Keel Newsmaker Hotline. Do you get Dr. Martha, her own sponsor? We really do. <laughs> really do. Dr. Martha White, Regional Director for the State Health Department. Hey, Dr. Martha, welcome back to Keel. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing okay. How are y'all? Okay, so here's here's something we've talked about, and, and we'd like to get your imprimatur, your thumb up, as it were. Um, Aaron has talked about when all this is over, when things, and we'll get to flatten the curve here in a couple of seconds. Aaron's made kind of a big deal about who our first live in-studio guest is going to be. I think she'll agree, since you've gone so above and beyond with us and have been so accessible and kind and generous with your time, I don't think she would disagree if I said we want our first in-studio guest when all this is better, when we're over the hump, over the hill, as it were, would you be our first in-studio guest? And we'll just have a Dr. Martha White day. Would that be okay? Oh, I'd be honored. That's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then you're it. Then you're it. Congratulations oh in advance. We'll have to get you a special chair. Um, <laughs> I, I have a question about the term flatten the curve. And I was talking to someone about that this weekend, and you can clarify. Because the people I were talking to and I, I guess it's true, I don't know, that what is meant by the term flatten the curve is that the number of people who will get sick does not change, just the time frame in which they get sick is altered. Is that what flatten the curve means, or have I got that wrong? Do they have that wrong? Well, you can flatten it two ways, so you're probably both right. You can flatten it by spreading it out over time so people get sick. Fewer people get sick at the same time, and so the curve is lower, right? Or you can flatten it by having fewer people sick. So you can bring down the peak, or you can spread it out and make it wider. We want to do both. Okay, Dr. White, we talked a, a, a while back about you were worried about everybody wearing masks out to, you know, Kroger, et cetera. Now the trend is everybody should wear them, but it's not a fail-safe, right? Explain why masks are now what we should be doing. So the CDC and the president and everyone has recommended that we go to wearing masks because we are not being successful at keeping people at home. People are out. There's a lot of disease in the community. And so we want, we want to make sure that we keep people as safe as we can. We're also learning more and more about this virus every day. There's a lot we don't know. So they figure it's better to wear masks the risk outweighs the benefits. I mean, the benefits outweigh the risk. I said that backwards, sorry. But please know, masks are not 100% effective, even in the best circumstances, especially cloth masks. They're about 60, 70% effective. And if they get moist and wet, that goes down even more. The way you wear them matters. You can't take them off, hang them on your chest, take them on and off, if you're touching them, touching the outside of them with your hands, taking them off and then touching things in your house, on your face, it's, it's all a risk. So there's videos out there about how to wear them. I have them on my Facebook page. You can find them on CDC. Please pay attention because they're not going to be what keeps you safe. The best thing you can do to stay safe is to stay home. So that's kind of like my next question, because I've seen people out and about with masks that literally were little more than a two-ply coffee filter. And <sighs> no, I'm, I'm being totally serious or just, uh, uh, you know, you know, kerchiefs is, is, is that to, that doesn't keep stuff out. It just keeps stuff in, right? What? Well, it, and that is a benefit. So, we don't know who's sick and who's not, and that's another reason why he, there is a recommendation for everyone who goes out to wear a mask, because if you're shedding virus, if you're early in the stages and you just have mild symptoms that you're not paying attention to, wearing that mask protects everybody that's around you. And I can tell you that's how my husband got sick. Someone didn't pay attention to some symptoms and went to work. And that's how he got sick, and, and other people at that um, building got sick. Okay, Tiger at the Bronx Zoo tests positive. 
um, <laughs> has people freaking out. Or is that a lab mess up? No, I, you know, it, the start, coronaviruses start in animals, but they're not contagious to us from animals. And, you know, the way that we they believe it started in China was through a, a raw, fresh meat market. So um, we, we don't have those here. Okay. <laughs> and so we're very cautious about how we use our meat. Um, but that this tiger is not going to get anybody sick. You had, Aaron had mentioned, I think it's on your Facebook page, maybe somewhere else, um, a home sort of a disinfectant bleach based spray. Tell us about that and what's the recipe? <laughs> now, see, I don't know the recipe by heart, but you can always use, um, you just have to remember you're using bleach, so you don't want to use it on things that'll stain, but you can always use a cup of bleach to a gallon of water, will dis be a disinfectant. But I also have, there's recipes, you can Google them, you can find them that are for, you can make your own Lysol wipes, you can make your own bleach wipes. So, you know, just because they're not in the store, don't think you can't find a way to keep your home clean and, and safe. I'm going to put those recipes that you posted up because they're real interesting and, and looks like real easy to do. Um, you can tell me to go they jump are. in the lake here this morning if you would like. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, but folks want to know if you're, if you care to share the status of your husband who had who had tested positive. How is he? Can you do you want to share or no? Well, he's still critically ill. Um, this is day nine. Um, you've seen articles on, in the paper about um, plasma, the first use of convalescent plasma. Mm -hmm. That was through some amazing people in this community who um, agreed to donate their plasma that went to my husband and I'll be forever grateful to them. Um, if this works for him, there's a lot of other people standing in line to donate for others. So hopefully we can make a change. Um, so, you know, I'm just praying that all these interventions are going to pull him through. And but I, I do appreciate all the prayers. I've had so many people praying mm -hmm. for him, and I'm very grateful. You're still testing negative then? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dr. Martha White, I can't thank you enough, and I'm looking forward to having you in studio as our first guest <laughs> when we get back to a regular life. She promises to wear real pants, I promise. Yeah, wear real pants and matching <laughs> shoes. I did see your pants. Those are cute. Thank you. Let's let's not you can encourage borrow them that. Anytime you want. That didn't help. <laughs> for surgery. She's going to pass on that, I think. Yeah. Dr. Martha, a pleasure as always. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Thank you all.